watching gears. You know, when listing the most iconic, influential cars, the Cobra has got to be right near the top. A brutally fast race car masterminded by Carroll Shelby. It went on to win title after title, race after race, making it one of the most successful and famous cars of all time. That's why today an original Cobra is worth a fortune. Even a nice replica like this can be a high dollar deal. But with all the emphasis on value and collectability, the real magic behind the Cobra has kind of been overlooked. It was a hot rod, plain and simple. The combination of a British ACA sports car and an American V8 by a Texas chicken farmer. So we decided to go back to the original idea behind the Cobra and see if it was possible to take a late model vehicle and transform it into something that was as blindingly fast as the Cobra, but still affordable, every bit as cool as the Cobra in its own way, but still have some modern equipment like air conditioning and a stereo and roll up windows. And we called the project the Banshee. And the response has been phenomenal. Everybody's been like, man, this is great. This is a project that we've been waiting for. But what most people were not prepared for was the car we started with. And the response was classic. What? A Mazda Miata? Are you crazy? That's a, that's a girl's car, man. But that perception changed as soon as we dug into the buildup and parts started flying all over the place. Oh, no. no, we're not done yet. Finally, the old blown engine was pulled out. Keep going. I think we can get it from here. Go ahead and roll it straight back. And room made to fit a V8 using a kit from Monster Miata. I got it. There you go, Chris. <laughs> Fortunately, there were plenty of new parts to put in to make the V8 feel right at home. The engine is a 400 horsepower 302 from Keith Craft Racing, and it was detailed and painted so it would look good in the car. The engine is built strong with a scat crank, Molly pistons, Brodex aluminum heads and roller rockers, and a Y-end intake and Holly carb top it off. The accessories were the next thing to go on, so the car would have all the modern conveniences like air conditioning and power rack and pinion steering. After that, a lightweight aluminum flywheel and performance clutch went on. followed by a T5 five-speed transmission. Then the whole mess was unmercifully rammed down the throat of the tiny Miata, which ended up having a surprising amount of room to spare. To handle the extra power, the rear end was upgraded with a 7.5 unit from an 80s T-Bird. Now, I know what you're thinking. A 7.5? Isn't that kind of small? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. But the guys at Monster Miata assured me that the 7.5 and the CV joints are plenty strong enough to handle over 400 foot-pounds of torque. Matter of fact, they say they've even got guys running in the 10s with these and not scattering them all over the track. So, we'll see. To hold that bigger rear end in place, a special bracket from the kit was welded in and everything bolted up. Of course, more power means you need stronger axles and bigger axles are supplied and simply slide in place in the Ford rear end. Hey, you wanna put this one in for me? You wanna put it in? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Now the suspension obviously needed some upgrades and fortunately the aftermarket is loaded with parts for the Miata. So performance Coney shocks and Eibach springs were slid in place and bigger bare disc brakes were installed to quickly haul this thing to a stop.
To add more safety and protection to the car, a dual roll bar was added, as well as a five-point harness. And as is typical with this kind of project, we found a few surprises. All right, you ready for this? You never quite know what you're going to find under a seat. Whoa. <laughs> I don't even want to <laughs> know what that is. There you go. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Gears and the payoff of the Banshee project. And we're walking you through the steps that we took to convert a mall cruiser Miata into a fire breathing sports car. Now at this point, all that junk was pulled off. We laid this to rest and a V8 drivetrain was in the car. The problem is it still looked like a Miata and that was never going to do. Because remember, part of the criteria is that it had to have a cool classic sports car look, something similar to a Cobra. So, out came the tools, and more parts came off. For the new look, we went with a kit from Simpson Design called the Italia and it's loaded with the look and the style of a classic 60s sports car without being a clone or a replica of any particular car. Which makes it the perfect choice to help create an original sports car called the Banshee. So, using these templates supplied with the kit, we're gonna make our openings for the headlights, the turn signals, and the grill. Now, make sure that you don't cut these too big because if you do, you're screwed. <laughs> the rear of the body was put together differently than the front, and that the new clip was bonded on to create a permanent first try not to slide it, try not to slide it. one piece assembly that's incredibly strong. All right, I love that part. Once the body was all put together and the new wheels and tires added, the transformation from a run-of-the-mill Miata to a one-of-a-kind Banshee was astounding. But the journey wasn't over yet. Paint was next. And the guys at West Kentucky Collision Center spent some serious time smoothing everything down and getting it just right before they shot on the special Banshee blue paint. After that, it was just a matter of finishing out the interior with new carpet, and putting all the final touches on the car.
You know, one question that a guy will ask himself from time to time when he's in the middle of a project is, am I ever going to finish this thing? And is all this effort worth it? Well, you're going to find that if you keep at it, you will finish it. And all the effort is worth it. Case in point, the Banshee. Now, we've already walked you through the extensive buildup of this car, but now it's time to take a look at the finished product and see what we got. The Italia body kit not only completely transforms the look of the car, but it gives it the swoopy, curvy lines of a vintage 60s sports car. Yeah, baby! <laughs> However, with roll-up windows and air conditioning... Man, that air conditioning is nice. A stereo... and a real working top, the Banshee is far more refined than something like a vintage Cobra, and actually a car that you could drive every day. To help prove that point, we even took the Banshee out for a spin in the rain. Now, the cool thing about a car like this, it's based off of a Miata. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's raining outside. If we were in a Cobra, oh, we would be in trouble. Yeah, there's only one problem. It's raining. <laughs> All right, we're done. Looks good. There's only one problem. What? It stopped raining. <laughs> With modern brakes and high-performance suspension, the Banshee will outhandle pretty much anything on the road and is an absolute blast on the road course. The short wheelbase and V8 power have the potential to bring the rear end around pretty much whenever you want to. That blend of power and handling allows you to push the car to the very edge whether you're road racing, drifting, or just messing around. And of course, with that V8 power, you'll be able to pretty much outrun anything, too. The best part is, you can build a car just like this one for around 20,000 bucks. If you don't do the body kit, you can get into a V8 powered Miata for around 10,000 bucks. And that includes buying the car. Guys, that's a fraction of what you pay for something like this. Now, after all this, there's still some people that would question why you would want to build something like this. And the simple answer is, <laughs> it's fun.